Hello everyone. Welcome to Triple I Library Podcast. My name is Dimas. I am a master student from Faculty of Islamic Studies at Indonesian International Islamic University. In this episode, I'd like to review a very good book entitled The Idea of the Muslim World: A Global Intellectual History. written by Jamil Aydin and published by Harvard University Press in 2017. Jamil Aydin is a professor of international or global history at the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill's Department of History. He is interested in historical processes that shape international, racial, and civilizational identities such as Muslim, Asian, and African. His research and publications offer new ways to understand the historical roots of the contemporary world order from the perspective of non-Western actors of the Muslim world and East Asia. So what is the book about? In this book, Jamil is talking about what is called by the Muslim world. He is questioning, is there such a thing as the Muslim world in reality? He started this book by telling the fact that the idea of the Muslim world, which is frequently contrasted with the West, has become a global narrative. Many people, both Muslims and non-Muslims, believed in the existence of global Muslim unity. But as a matter of fact, Muslims live in different parts of the world, speak different languages, have different traditions and cultures, and also have different nationalities and political interests. And also, if we look throughout the history of Islam, we will see that there was no such a thing as global Muslim unity. So the big question is, when did the idea of the Muslim world emerge in global conversation, and why did this narrative become the mainstream belief up to the present day? Unlike the mainstream belief, Jamil argued that the notion of the Muslim world was just an illusion. It is a fabricated, imaginary world created by some political actors, either from the Muslim side through the idea of pan-Islamism in the 1870s, or from West empirical racism through Islamophobia to pursue their political objectives. And before that, Muslims never imagined such a global unified community until the 19th century. when European hegemony peaked and the Muslims suffered a decline in various fields due to colonization. To prove his argument, Jamil recounts Islamic historical events from the 7th century when Islam was born through the second half of the 20th century. He elaborated the fractions and wars among Islamic dynasties from Umayyad to the Ottoman Empire. A solid evidence. He also described the historical events in the first half of the 19th century, where the British Christian Empire supported Ottoman Muslim rule over Christians to denote the absence of a monolithic Islamic narrative versus the West. It was in 1878 the idea of pan-Islamism. promoted by Sultan Abdul Hamid II and resulted in Islamophobia in the West community, began to emerge. This idea aims to gain support from Muslim community in the world due to the defeat of the Ottomans over Russia. Pan-Islamism, which assumes a unified global Muslim community, was strengthened by the two fatwas issued by uh, an Ottoman Muslim cleric that encouraged Muslims around the world to revolt and fight against the Ottoman invaders, particularly Russia, French, the British Empire, and their allies. As a conclusion, Jamil stated that the grand narrative of the clash civilization between Islam and the West must be shown to be false. It was all about the political objectives in the context of geopolitical interests between empirical racism and Muslim reformers with their pan-Islamic claims. In the present day, where Islamist groups are rising and gaining more public attention, this book becomes an important reading for academics and also non-academic circle. The narrative of Islam as a unified geopolitical community 
versus the West has made it difficult for the Eastern and Western communities to unite. It also caused them to be constantly suspicious of one another. We have to understand that the conflict between the two is just a political conflict veiled in the cloak of theology. The main idea of this book invariably opposes civilizational theorists such as Samuel Huntington and Bernard Lewis who talk about the clashes of civilizations. And at the same time, this book is in line with the accommodationists such as John L. Esposito who viewed the threat of Islam as a myth repeated by the West. To these theories, the rise of Islam should not be seen as a threat, but as an authentic expression of Muslims to contribute to global civilization. Well, I think that's all I can say about the book. If you want to read this book and other insightful books, I suggest you to come to the Triple IU Library. Happy reading and see you. Thank you.